Hi, Mike Mazzalongo here, uh, BibleTalk.tv, answering some of the mail that we get. Uh, today I want to talk about funerals. Uh, not that I get a lot of mail about funerals, but in the more than 40 years of ministry, I've done a lot of uh, funerals for individuals, of course, in our congregation and in other uh, places. And one of the things that I've noticed that is uh, pretty much the same every time I uh, help a family uh, prepare a funeral is um, uh, the questions that they ask uh, about uh, organizing a, a funeral service. It's al always the same questions. And obviously, uh, people you know, uh, don't have to prepare uh, funerals from week to week as ministers uh, do, so they're not uh, usually prepared for that. So I'd like to answer some of the basic questions about uh, how to you know, organize a, uh, just a general uh, funeral for a family member or friend. Uh, first of all, uh, I encourage uh, people, of course, to work with the uh, family, the, uh, the uh, funeral directors uh, that uh, the, the uh, family is uh, associated with uh, and or the clergymen uh, from, their, uh, from their church. Uh, the first decision that usually has to be made is uh, if this will be a burial or a uh, cremation. And that decision is usually made uh, ahead of time by the individual in their will, uh, or perhaps uh, that individual has let the family know what their wishes are. Um, uh, it helps to know this, of course, uh, as far as time is concerned. If uh, you're doing a, a burial, then uh, time is of the essence, uh, usually between the time of uh, death and the time that the actual funeral service uh, uh, takes place is only a couple of days. Uh, various states have different laws, but uh, usually three to five days is the amount of time that they permit from the uh, time of passing to the time of burial. Um, if the individual is cremated, well, obviously, uh, this gives the family a little more time to prepare a service, uh, more time for uh, family members and friends from out of town to uh, congregate uh, in order to uh, attend a, a service. As far as uh, preparing uh, the service itself, usually there's a choice. Uh, uh, between having a full service either at the funeral parlor, they usually have a, an auditorium or a space there where uh, you can conduct a funeral service, or the church building uh, where the individual is a member or where the family has a uh, connection. Either way, the service that takes place in those locations uh, either of those locations is usually the same. And they, they all contain the same components, if you wish. Now, you have the choice of uh, doing either a full service or what's called a graveside. A graveside service is simply a, a short uh, devotional service, if you wish, uh, at the place of burial or where the, uh, where the urn uh, will be uh, interred. If you're going to do a graveside service, uh, usually uh, some of the things that take place at a graveside service is, uh, uh, first of all, um, uh, uh, sharing uh, from the family. You know, the family and the close friends are gathered at, at the graveside, and uh, different individuals may want to share some memories, or some poems, letters, so on and so forth. And if there's a clergyman uh, present, uh, that individual will read uh, from the scriptures or perhaps offer a prayer. Uh, usually a graveside service doesn't last more than uh, 15, 20 minutes or so. Uh, and then, of course, the family and friends are uh, free to uh, visit and, uh, and share uh, for a little while uh, longer. If you're, going to have a, uh, if you're going to have a full service, uh, then there are several components to, uh, to every service. Uh, for those of you who are uh, members of the church, or those of you who are Christians, um, you have to remember that a funeral service is not like a worship service. There are certain elements that are the same, but they don't follow the same rules. For a worship service, we have specific things that the Bible uh, teaches us that we are to do when we have a, uh, a, um, a worship service. A funeral service, of course, is more uh, flexible. So here are some of the components uh, that make up 
a uh, funeral service. Well, first of all, there's the music. And these are some of the things that you as the family member or as the individual organizing the uh, service will have to consider. So the first thing is the uh, music. Will it be recorded music or will it be live or will it be a combination of both? Usually the um, uh, funeral director has uh, recorded music that you can use, but certainly uh, any music that you choose uh, can be used at a, um, at a funeral uh, service. In the same way, if you're having live music, in other words, if people are singing uh, at the uh, service, then you'll have to select the songs uh, that will be sung uh, at the service. And again, I remind you, you can use a combination of both recorded and uh, live music. Uh, the next uh, component, and it doesn't have to be in this particular order, but the next component is uh, perhaps a reading from the, uh, from the Bible, uh, a, a passage of scripture that is uh, beloved by the family or was a favorite scripture of the uh, deceased. Then, of course, there are uh, prayers that can be offered, uh, either by the uh, clergyman uh, or a member of the family. Uh, then there uh, are two things. A lot of times they're mixed together, uh, the obituary and the eulogy. Uh, the obituary are the facts uh, about the life of the individual, where they were born, uh, who they married, uh, who they left behind, how many children, grandchildren, where they worked, and, you know, that type of thing, if they belonged to certain associations, if they were veterans. Uh, that's the obituary. It's a kind of the the facts uh, about the individual. The eulogy is, a, is, is a really an attempt to describe what that person was like. Now, many times uh, some uh, individuals, ministers, clergymen, they, uh, they combine the, the, the obituary and the eulogy into one thing, but they don't have to be. You can have someone uh, simply read the obituary, and the obituary usually uh, is worked out with uh, you and the uh, funeral director. They usually have a form that you fill out uh, to help them uh, prepare that obituary, and they will, you know, they'll list it in the newspaper if you desire, and uh, put it on the um, the uh, funeral parlor's uh, website. Uh, and so you can have someone uh, from the family or friend uh, read the obituary. The eulogy, on the other hand, tells about the individual, and that's very flexible. You can have the minister, uh, you know, eulogize the deceased, or you can have different family members uh, up to talk about uh, the individual uh, memories that they have, uh, perhaps um, uh, remembrances that they have about uh, the individual things that they did together, certain habits they had, uh, amusing stories. This is the time really uh, where the family draws uh, close together uh, in remembering uh, the deceased uh, with uh, uh, you know, stories and tales and uh, funny anecdotes uh, about uh, that uh, particular uh, person. Uh, uh, during this time of uh, sharing, of course, uh, there's the eulogy, but you can also have uh, poetry. Uh, I've, I've had funerals where individuals just got up and sang uh, a favorite song. Uh, someone uh, played, uh, I remember in one funeral, uh, a favorite song on the guitar, just uh, an instrumental. So it's pretty flexible what you, you know, what you can do during the time of uh, eulogizing. Uh, if, of course, uh, the body is to be buried, if there will be a burial and the casket uh, with the body is present at the service, then uh, many uh, families elect to have a final viewing uh, where the casket is opened and uh, before the end of the uh, service, uh, the uh, guests will file in front of the, um, of the open casket for a final uh, goodbye and uh, perhaps to greet the family as they uh, leave the uh, auditorium uh, and uh, leave the family uh, for a final moment uh, with uh, the casket, a uh, final moment to, uh, uh, to say goodbye. Usually that's a good uh, moment also when the... Um, 
uh, minister will uh, offer a, a closing prayer to, uh, to close the service. Uh, after this, there's the, uh, for a full service and where there will be a burial, uh, there's the transport and uh, the director, the funeral director, will uh, usually uh, have you choose uh, pallbearers, uh, individuals who will accompany the uh, casket uh, to, the, uh, to the car uh, that will transport uh, the body to the, um, uh, to the uh, cemetery. And then, of course, uh, uh, for a full service, uh, there is a graveside. So you can either have only a graveside or you can have a full service followed by a short graveside service where the body will be interred. Or you can have only a service with no graveside. So you've, you've got choices. And remember, of course, if you're using a funeral parlor, um, uh, the cost of the funeral will be determined uh, by how many components that you use. So if you have only a, a graveside service, well, it'll be less expensive, of course. Uh, if you have a full service well, where the body will be transported and then will follow that with a, a graveside service, then, of course, that will be more expensive because it will involve uh, more individuals who will drive uh, vehicles and they'll have to set up a tent and so on and so forth. So these are matters that you have to consider, you know, according to your budget and your preference when you're helping to plan a funeral. And of course, one question that always uh, comes up is, uh, do we pay? Who pays the, uh, the minister? If you have a minister, a clergy person that's there, uh, usually this is the family. Uh, that takes care of uh, that honorarium. It's called an honorarium. Um, the funeral parlor does not pay the, the minister. You can always uh, give the honorarium for the minister to the funeral parlor and they will give it to him or you can give it to him uh, directly. And of course, uh, the question always arises, what do you give? What's the standard amount? Uh, in this day and age, uh, the standard amount that I have heard and seen uh, is about $150 uh, is uh, what the standard honor honorarium is uh, full of for a full service. And again, it's, it's not something that you have to do. It uh, depends, of course, on the, uh, uh, the means and the ability of the family to, uh, to do these things. I, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure that any minister would be happy to uh, assist a family and do a funeral uh, at no charge uh, if this is um, convenient for the family and if this will help them. So uh, a couple of ideas about funerals uh, to kind of demystify the whole process um, for those individuals that uh, at some point or another will have to plan a funeral for a loved one in their family. Well, I hope it's uh, been helpful. Encourage you to continue to uh, watch uh, our BibleTalk.tv uh, website and all the good material that is there for you, uh, helping you to know the Bible better. Mike Mazzalongo, see you soon. Bye-bye.